So let's notice our napkins and I'm gonna get into where things are located at the table. The first thing we notice is we have a napkin ring on our napkin and everybody else always wants to know where do you put your napkin ring? And you actually remove your napkin ring and it is placed on the upper left zone of your place setting. And that's, that's where all unwanted items will go. So that stays there. And then we're going to open up our napkin all the way, and then we're going to refold it in half lengthwise. Folded part facing you and the open part facing your knees. The reason we want the napkin spread across is because we want to protect our clothing. We want maximum coverage, right? In case bread, crumbs, buttery fingers, etc. The second thing is we want to reserve a spot on the right hand corner for wiping our mouth. That way we don't put breadcrumbs and butter onto our face. So that is right here. If this was my lap, I pull back the right hand corner mm -hmm. and I use the interior pocket. So I make a peace mm -hmm. sign, I go underneath and I dab and then I return the napkin to my lap. The most important thing is to not crouch down when you need to use your napkin. You wanna maintain beautiful posture at the table. By the way, posture, remember I was talking about this is all exercises, right? Mm -hmm. Sitting up nice and straight, core is held in, we never lean back, and wrists are on the table like so. And this is the continental style of dining. Now let's look at the table. So easy way to remember is to think of the acronym BMW, like the car. BMW, we read left to right. We read the table, left to right. B is for your bread, point to your bread. M is for your meal, point to your meal. And W is for your water. So we notice now um, the silverware on the table. You have two forks, two knives, and a spoon next to the knives and a spoon above. So we always work from the table, reading from the outside going in toward your plate. So we know if there's a spoon at the very outside, what does this stand for? That we will be having soup. If you see a smaller fork. Is that the salad? Salad. Oh, so you're going to use right. its partner, the knife, next to the soup spoon for the, for the second course. We're going to start with the soup course. That's the salad. Mm -hmm. Then we go in again. You see the larger fork and the larger knife. That is for our entree course. Mm. And then you have a spoon above your place setting. If you see any utensils above your place setting, that means good news, dessert mm -hmm. will be served. Okay? Okay. All right. And then you have another knife over here on this little dainty mm -hmm. plate on the left for our bread. So go ahead and bring that down toward you because we well, I see a lot of people mistakenly put their bread plate in the middle of their mm -hmm. plate. That's a big faux pas. We do oh, not need to do that. Okay. So um, please pick, by the way, is everybody right-handed? No, I'm left-handed. No. I'm a lefty too. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. So do what's comfortable. For my right-handed people, we pick up the butter knife, the teeny tiny knife. This is for spreading butter. So I want to teach you if you ladies need to hold it in your left, do so. We butter our bread one bite-sized piece at a time. So go ahead, please, ladies, and sit up and twist to your left. Break off one bite-sized piece for me, please. Not a teeny tiny bird size, but a nice bite-sized hunk. So we don't need to peel the top off. No, no, that's the crust. That's the best part. You want <laughs> crust and the inside of the dough. Okay. Now pick up your butter knife, hold your bread, and when you butter it, place it down on the plate. And then hold your knife and smear the butter on the bread while in contact with the plate. Bread down, mm. bread down oh. on the plate. Oh. And then once you've cleaned your butter knife, place it back down on the plate in its entirety, and then bring the bread to your mouth and eat. Mm. Oh, by the way, you wanna be about three inches away from the edge of the table. So oh, we're too far. you don't wanna be too far back, but nor do you wanna be too close. Also, the purpose of dining is never about the food. It's really about what? Why do we dine? For connection? Yes and building relationship, building rapport. So the idea is that we rest it um, very nicely in a horizontal position. You can use your pinky for balance. It's really not just an affectation. It has a purpose. However, if you don't feel comfortable, not at all necessary. Um, the most important thing is that we always think about scooping away. So we start with the spoon. By the way, so as this sp soup spoon is round. So that actually tells us that we can drink from the side of the bowl. 
So when we, first of all, we need to lean in when we, when we have our soup and we start by scooping away. So we scoop the soup and then we bring it into our mouth from the side of the bowl and we tilt like so. And if you do have some, some vegetables, etc., cetera, um, feel free to um, you know, bring them into your mouth as easily as possible. Now, if you get down to the end of your soup, you can actually tilt your bowl away from you just to get those last remnants down here. But always drinking from the side of the bowl and tilting into your mouth that way. If you have very hot soup and you want to cool it down, we actually never blow. We want to actually think of what we call an inhale whistle, which sounds like so. That way. You don't have to make it audible. I just wanted you to hear. Mm -hmm. But it really does do the same trick. It cools down the soup, and then you won't burn yourself and also avoids wow. blowing it across the table, right? Mm. Finally, in terms of when you're taking a moment, let's say you need a rest in between bites, the soup spoon actually rests in the bowl on whichever side. <laughs> If you had a soup bowl with a plate underneath, smaller plate, that's a saucer. Mm -hmm. When you were finished, you could leave it on the saucer underneath on the right side. Must be on the right side right. because when this wait staff clears, they clear from the right. However, we do not have a saucer, so you will actually rest the spoon for the, for the resting position and the finished position in the, on the right side. Okay, but during bites, you can have it on the left just because of my left hand, the girl. So feel free to enjoy, and then we'll prepare for the next course. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Everything happens in your index fingers. So index fingers here, where the handle meets the blade and the handle meets the fork tines, and everything happens in the wrist. So pierce the food with your fork tines down first. So really connect with the food and the plate and then use your knife to gently cut the food, leaving your knife down and bring the food into your mouth four times down, leaning in. Do not let go of that knife. Yes, good job. Excellent, beautiful ladies, perfection. Okay, now do me a favor, don't put another bite in. Take your fork and knife and put them on top of your plate in an upside down V. That is what we call the resting position. Mm. That is what you do in between bites when you need to wipe your mouth. Mm. You go ahead and wipe your mouth, ladies. Beautiful, love the posture. Gorgeous, oh my gosh, <laughs> A plus students. And then resume your hold. Perfect, cut another bite. Let's see it. Do we like the salad, by the way? Do we like it the food? It tastes great, yeah. Okay, good. I think there's some figs and some cheese oh, and all kinds of stuff. Great. Okay. And we're eating so quietly. It's gorgeous. <laughs> okay. And so on and so forth. Mm. All right, ladies. So now we are at the main course or the entree course. And um, this is a bit of a challenge, I will tell you, because not only have I given you chicken, but you are seeing chicken on the bone. So that is not easy, plus french fries. And by the way, yes, they are a finger food. However, I am going to have you eat them with a fork and a knife. So it may be a bit more challenging, but I think you're up to the task. Do you agree? Yes. Great. Okay, good. Let's start by piercing the chicken. And you want to try and find a spot that's not in the bone. So maybe starting from the end. So steady it first with your fork and then cut with your knife and then bring the food into your mouth four times down. And I'm going to show you, ladies, what I call a party in your mouth. So I want you to have a piece of chicken on your fork first. Okay, yes. Okay. Then, I'm wow. gonna capture a little carrot. I'm going to go over here and add a little fry. This is a wonderful explosion for your taste buds. Now bring it all in, chew and swallow with the mouth closed and enjoy. <laughs> How do we like that? It's a party. <laughs> okay. Now, one of the things that helps us too, when we are dining and we need to think about a place to keep our silverware in terms of the resting position is to eat, keeping the food in a nice, tidy uh, portion of the plate. So we have the rim of the plate, so everything should really happen in the inside 
of the rim. So in order to be mindful that there's a space for the fork and knife, you want to keep things down almost inside the triangle, right? That way you have a place to put your fork and knife at the top of your plate when you are taking a rest. And this is the position you want to make if you have to excuse yourself to go to the ladies' room. Okay, now I want to show you a new position, which we haven't learned, which is finished position. So the finished position looks like this, where we close the gap. So we bring the fork and knife together in the end, but it will rest on the right side, and that is for the wait staff to be able to remove our plates from the right. And blade of the knife facing in, for, so the blade actually would be on the on the to the right of your foot. Okay, gotcha. Yes, that. yes. And on the right hand side on the diagonal. But do the best you can because I know we have a full plate of food. We're we're practicing these. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. And now we're ready for dessert. So take your spoon and fork and you will see the direction that they are leads us or leads us rather to know where they should land on the table. Spoons are always on the right, forks are always on the left. Now bring your dessert plate a little closer to you and you're going to use the spoon as your dominant utensil. Again, my left-handed ladies, <laughs> whatever feels comfortable. And when we cut our cake, we use the side of the spoon and then the fork is used as the pusher. Mm. helps to push the food into the spoon and we eat with only one utensil so we're not using both this way but we have the aid of the second utensil so that we don't chase the food off our plate right so please begin let me know how the cheesecake is and you leave the fork down but we don't set the fork down oh. we hold the utensil and then same position remember with the resting now for these you can face them fork and spoon up okay. And then when you're finished, you'll bring them together, fork and spoon together in the end mm -hmm. on the right. Now I know these are teeny tiny plates. We have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. There isn't a lot of room, right? Right. Okay. But this is just a wonderful way to always know that we have two utensils. We have a whole array of utensils for so many different types of food. Mm -hmm. And it really helps us because I can't tell you how many times I'm in a restaurant and I see diners struggling to cut their meat and it looks mm -hmm. like they're pitchforking their steak mm -hmm. or they don't know that they can actually use two utensils and the purpose is really just to aid us in bringing the food into our mouths in an elegant fashion. When there isn't any distraction, we can focus on the relationship building. Okay, so let's place our utensils down and now I want to show you what we do at the very end of the meal. Please pick up your napkins, ladies. And you'll see how, remember it's folded in, in half lengthwise. All you need to do is pinch the napkin at the center. And almost like an imaginary napkin ring, go over it like that. And then the napkin is placed on the left hand side of the table with the point facing in towards the center. This way, sorry, the center of the table. Oh, you're perfect, okay. you're perfect okay. as okay. is. And look at how beautiful that is. Me. And this is all, no matter if you have a white napkin, you've just had an entire chocolate dessert, mm -hmm. miraculously, it's all hidden. So there you have it, gals. You survived the class. <laughs> and I have to say, no, my applause to you. Oh, I mean, <laughs> seriously, you all looked gorgeous today with a smile on your face and a natural poise and elegance. So I really had easy to work with people. Thank you. So I want to thank you so much for being with me today and uh, and just, you know, enjoying these skills. And please, be the role models you want to see in the world. Now that you have this information, use it, share it. Don't be ashamed of knowing it. It doesn't mean you're any better than anyone else. It's just, like I said, you are now in possession of these skills. And it, remember, it's about feeling that confidence, mm -hmm. feeling like you belong anywhere, and then also putting other people at ease. So share it, use it, practice it, live it, love it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. My You're pleasure. You're a wonderful teacher. Thank yes. you. You're very fun and just very easy to learn from. So Thank you. It was a pleasure to be able to learn from you. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, enjoy your days, ladies. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs>